Welcome to LM LM Crochet. In this video I'm going to show you how to make this adorable little unicorn with his little floppy um, hair, little mane and tail. I hope you enjoy the tutorial and if you have any questions at all please leave them below and I will get back to you. Thank you! So what you need to make this unicorn come alive is of course your crochet hook that matches the yarn you're using. Um, a pair of scissors, always handy to have them nearby. Your yarn needle for sewing in ends and things like that. Um, some toy stuffing is going to be a must for stuffing. Um, you don't have to use toy stuffing saying that, you could use um, scraps of material or scraps of yarn. Um, the colours that I'm going to be using, but of course that's completely up to you, is I'm going to use white for the body and I, I love working in cotton for my um, amigurumi, they're just much more hard wearing and come out looking a bit neater as well. Um, so that's white for my main body and then I'm going to use um, these colours, um, cotton again, for the sort of horn, the tail, the mane, um, and what have I forgotten? Oh, the hooves as well. And this, as you can see here, I've left the label on this one, is um, Rico Design Creative Cotton, and it's an Aran weight. But you can honestly use whatever you um, whatever you like, whatever you have. So on the back here it says yarn hook um, size four to five. But because this is amigurumi, you always like your you always need your stitches to be a bit tighter. Um, so that when you stuff it, you don't have the um, you don't have the gaps where you can see the stuffing. So I'm actually going to use um, a 3.5 millimeter crochet hook today, um, just for those tighter stitches. Okay, let's get going. Just before we begin the pattern, I wanted to mention as well that you can get um, safety eyes, and I think I just got these off eBay, um, that you can use to make your amigurumi creatures just come alive that little bit more. If not, you can always embroider eyes on, but um, I'm going to be showing you how to use these today. Okay, so getting on with the project, the first thing I need is my um, white yarn. So that's the yarn colour of the unicorn's body. So if you don't want to use white for the body, then you start with, with whichever you start with whichever colour you're um, going to use. So we're going to start with um, the magic ring and we're going to make six stitches in that ring. As always, I will put in the description box below um, a link to my video where I do this in much more detail and much more slowly. Otherwise, this is how I tend to do the magic ring or magic circle. And as I create the X like that, pick up this piece of yarn, put it to one side, pull up this loop here, put my hook inside the loop there, yarn over and pull through that hole that's been created. And then I just take my finger out. Okay. What we're going to do then is put six single crochet, that's US terminology which I'm going to be using for the rest of this video, but that's all that means is um, double crochet in um, UK terminology. So six single crochet into that ring. One, two, three, four, five and six okay and then you just take your tail there and pull it and that should close off the um, the ring like that okay so in the next round we're increasing again we're going to make six into 12 which means we need to do an increase into every stitch around so that first stitch is often quite tricky to get into so I'm just going to use my finger to help there we go if you're a beginner, that might take a little bit longer, but don't worry, you can always pause the video at any point and then I'll be there waiting for you. Okay, so increase into every stitch around. And all that means is you do two stitches, two single crochet into every single crochet you've got there. And that just um, increases the round. So that means from now on, we're going to have uh, we're going to have 12 stitches on the next round. So I'm going to do that, two single crochet into each stitch around until I've got 12 stitches and then I'll come back and show you what to do from there. 
Okay, so we now have 12 stitches in the round. So what we're going to do now is turn 12 into 18 by doing an increase round again. So all you need to do is two single crochet in the next stitch, one single crochet on its own in the following stitch, two, one, two, one, all the way around until you have 18 stitches. So we'll just show you one. So an increase in that first stitch, one, and then I'm gonna go back in again to that same stitch to make two, so there's my increase done. And then in the next stitch, I'm going to do one single crochet on its own. So I now have a stitch count of three on this round. Next stitch will be an increase again, bringing my stitch count up to five, four, five. And then a single crochet on its own in the next stitch. Bringing my six stitch count up to six, and I'm going to go all the way around just like that until I have 18. And there are my 18 stitches. Next up, we do an increase followed by two single crochet on their own until we have a stitch count of 24. So that's increase in the next stitch. And one single crochet, crochet each in the following stitches. Repeat that all the way around until you have a stitch count of 24. And there are my 24 stitches in the round. And the next round is going to be an increase again until we have 30 stitches. And all you're going to do is increase in the first stitch and then single crochet in the following three stitches. So you're going to do that all the way around until you have a stitch count of 30. So it's increase, one, two into the same stitch. And then in the following three stitches, you're just going to do one single crochet each. Three, four, five. Okay, so increase and then one, two, three single crochet on their own until you have a stitch count of 30. Okay, we are now on our final increase um, round of this um, body section of the unicorn. So we need to make 36 stitches and that means we increase in the first um, stitch and you've probably guessed it by now we're going up by one each time aren't we so increase in the first stitch and then one two three four single crochet on their own in the following four stitches increase on the next one the one two three four uh, in the next four single crochet until you have a stitch count of 36 so that's increase one two in the first stitch there and then one, two, three, four on their own and then increase again. Okay, so do that all the way around until you have 36 stitches and then I'll see you back here in a second. Okay, wonderful. Once you've got 36 stitches, we've now completed the um, increases for the body section of the unicorn and all we need to do now is single crochets in every single stitch around um, and we're going to do that for just checking the pattern for 15 rounds okay so in a time like this the best thing I can recommend is getting um, a stitch marker of some kind and I'll show you how I use a stitch marker all I do is I single crochet in the first two stitches then I just pull up that yarn there, get it out of the way, put my hook back into that first single crochet I just made just then, and I pull through the tail. Do you see this tail here from the middle of the magic ring that we made? I pull that through that first stitch, and then I know, as I'm making all my stitches all the way around and building up and building up and building up and building up, um, I can then count back from this point to see how many rounds I have made. It just saves you counting every single stitch around as you're going. If you like that counting um, part of, of crocheting, then by all means, you would need to count up to, uh, well, I can't do the maths right now, but 15 times 36, so 15 rounds of 36. So um, work out what that is, and then you just go count away. Otherwise, I think that the safest way is probably to use a stitch marker, and that way you don't lose count. Um, and I, once I've done those rounds, I'll show you how I count back if you're not sure how to do that at this point. 
Um, so yeah, so one single crochet in each in each stitch around for 15 rounds, and I'll see you back here when that's done. So please feel free to pause the video, um, and then I'll show you what we need to do from there. Okay, so once you've done your 15 rounds, it should um, look a little bit like this, in fact. So I just want to show you what I meant about using the stitch marker, using the tail there as the stitch marker and then just counting. Um, what I can do now is, because that's the, the tail I put in the first stitch that I made on the rounds uh, of single crochet, all I can do now is count those rounds, the one where you can see the rounds are. One, two, three, four, five, six. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So I know I've done my 15 rounds that I needed to do. Okay, the next section is where things um, change a little bit. So we've been working in the round up until now. What we're going to start doing next is we're going to work um, in rows, which is... is Quite unusual for amigurumi projects but you'll see why we're doing this um, as it progresses so what we need to do next is to single crochet in the first 14 stitches okay so let's do that Okay, so that's my 14 done. Pause the video if you're not quite there. The next stitch is going to be um, a single crochet, two together, which means we're going to do a decrease. Um, again, I have lots of videos for beginners on all of these stitches, but if you're feeling, you've got, you've got this far and you're feeling okay, but you've never come across a decrease before, you should be okay at this point if I just do it slowly for you. So we're going to actually do two de decreases, which is a good opportunity for me to show you twice. So um, we're going to go into the next stitch as we normally would, grab a bit of yarn as we normally would, pull it through, but instead of completing the single crochet, you're going to go back into into the following stitch. We're not going back, we're going into the following stitch. And then that gives you three loops on your hook. And you want this to be relatively tight because decreases tend to be where the gaps appear and you don't want the, um, the stuffing to kind of come through. So nice and tight. Um, if you're a beginner, then it's, it tends to be slightly more difficult to get it tighter, but do your best at this point. Okay, and then you just yarn over and pull it through all through, all three. So I'm going to show you that again, because we need to do two decreases. So yarn over as we normally would for a single crochet, go into the next stitch before yarning over, get some more yarn, three loops on your hook, then you yarn over and pull through all three as tightly as you possibly can. Okay, and then to finish that row, you're just going to do another 14 single crochet. So it's going to be very symmetrical what we're doing here, okay? And you'll see that as we go on. Um, the decrease will create the front of the body and it'll, it'll help the front to sort of rise up, to sort of curve up. Um, like an animal would have at the, you know, a horse or a unicorn would have at the front of their body. So hopefully the effect will be really good when we're done. Um, so do your last 14 single crochet and then stop and um, replay the video and I'll show you what to do from there, okay? Okay, so I've just done the next 14 there. So what we need to do now is actually to chain one and this helps you to turn your work and gives a nice straight line as well, so that's quite a good tip. Okay, so then you're just going to turn the project like that. And now we're working on the opposite side. 
and you're just going to go back into that first stitch and then you're going to do a total including that one that we just did you're going to do a total of 29 single crochet and then you'll end up end up where we started on the previous row okay so 29 including that one we just did so um if you just did that one then it's 28 more single crochet and then i'll show you what to do from there okay so it should be looking like that once you've just done your 29 single crochet so now we've got to this beginning point again we need to do another chain one and we need to turn our work back around again okay and this time you're going to do 13 single crochet and then two decrease stitches so what I'll do is I'll do the 13 single crochet off camera and then I'll show you the decrease stitches again just in case you didn't quite get it so um, the first time so we'll or if you're feeling a little bit unsure. So we'll do 13 single crochet, and then we'll come back, do the decreases together, and then do the final 13 single crochet. Okay? Okay, so those decreases, then I've just finished the 13, so now I need to do two decreases again. So hook in the stitch, pull up the yarn, into the next stitch, pull up the yarn, yarn over, pull through, all loops on the hook and another one into the next stitch pull up the yarn into the next stitch pull up the yarn yarn over and pull through all three keeping it nice and tight if you can okay so now we're going to do 13 single crochet and then a chain one and a ten and once you've finished your 13 single crochet as I said just chain one and then turn your work again and this time we're going to do 27 single crochet all the way around until we um, come back to this side again okay so go off and do 27 single crochet and then I'll show you what to do next okay so next round is going to start in the same way we're going to chain one and then turn okay and then you're going to do um, in this round, in this row rather, you're going to do single crochet in the next 12, then you're going to do two decreases again in the middle here, and then you're going to single crochet to the end, which would be um, 11. I think I added one on the last round, so um, don't worry if you were one short on the previous round. Um, so I'll just repeat that again for you. So single crochet in the next 12 stitches, then two decreases then single crochet to this side which will be 11 single crochet and then I'll meet you back here okay so as you can see now it's really starting to rise up at the front there so it will so it looks a lot like a sort of animal's body which is really good which is the effect that we want um okay so you're at the end of the round again so that means this time you're just going to chain one and turn your work as we have been doing and then you're just going to single crochet into each single crochet around. So that will give us um, 25 single crochet. And then we'll come back and I'll show you what to do from there. So 25 single crochet until you get back to the beginning point again. Okay, so we're on to the final decrease row now. So we need to do, um, at the end of the round, we need to chain one and turn and then you uh what we need to do next is single crochet in the next 11 then do your two uh, decreases and then you single crochet in the stitches to the end which should be 10. so i'll just repeat that single crochet in the next 11 stitches two decreases here where it's starting to rise up and then single crochet in the rem remaining 10 stitches and i'll see you when we get back there okay Okay, so uh, this is going to be the final row now. Um, after this, we're going to join the front part together. So we just need to chain one, as we have been doing, and single crochet into every stitch until we come back to the first stitch. So that should be 23 single crochet. And then I'll see you back, um, back there for the closing together. 
Okay, so this round is going to be slightly different. I keep calling it a round, it's a row, sorry. So this row is gonna be slightly different. Um, just before I do it, actually, I'm just going to pull that tail out there because this is the part where we start closing things up. Um, so, just gonna chain one again, as we have been doing. And then I'm gonna turn my work. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the front loop of this stitch here. So the front loop only, it's a bit fiddly, sorry. There we go, so just that front loop. And then I'm gonna go into the um, front loop only, well in this case I suppose it, it's more like the back loop, but if you're looking at it, it's the front loop. So the, the front loop of the following side, and just sort of sandwich it together like that. And then I'm just gonna take some yarn and pull it through all three as a kind of slip stitch, okay? So I'm gonna do that all the way down. I'll probably do it, most of it on camera for you just because this might be something you haven't done before. So into that front loop and into the front loop on the other side grab some yarn and pull it through all the loops on your hook. So it's gonna be quite fiddly, this section, but it's it's worth it at the end, it's, um, it's a good finish. So into that front loop and then front loop on the corresponding side. And then pull through. Okay. Front loop, front loop, pull through all three. Just have a look how it's looking. Yep, it's looking good. <laughs> and continue. Okay, so on the final one now, just pull it through and just keep pulling your hook and then we're going to cut that off. Uh, we don't need a long tail, we're just going to sew it in. In fact, I am going to sew it in straight away just to check that the finish is, is uh, nice and neat. So I'm just going to thread that onto a yarn needle. Um, there aren't any gaps or anything, so I don't need to sew anything up. I'm just going to literally thread it through. Because I'm using cotton, it's quite tough to pull through. There we go. But if you're using acrylic or wool, um, it's always a bit softer. It's a bit more gentle on the fingers, you can see there. I've got my mark from where the yarn. Um, and that's brilliant, that's exactly the finish that we want because you've got that curved up front there like you would get on the on, a, on an actual horse. So, um, so it's looking good. All right, so this bit here is obviously looking very unfinished, but the good news is that's going to be where we put um, the neck, so that's where we're working next. So, grab your yarn again, we might as well move straight on to the neck. So it doesn't actually matter where you join your yarn um, back onto the neck. So I'll show you how I join yarn back on. So I just put my hook through and I take the tail end of the yarn between these two fingers and just hold it tight. And then I wrap that yarn and just pull it through anywhere. Like I said, you can start anywhere on the body. I'm just choosing to start here because it feels most comfortable. And then I'm just going to yarn over and slip stitch okay and then what you're going to do now 
quite simply is you're going to do a single crochet in each of the stitches around now obviously on the neck um, on the front bit here where we are now, these aren't actually stitches, but you can see that there are openings created. So this is going to feel quite weird to begin with if this is new to you, but it does look good um, once it's done. So I'm going to go into, I've got on my pattern that I wrote here, there's around 21 stitches, single crochet, but that we'll call that a rough guide. So we've done one already with the slip stitch. Um, in fact, we won't count the slip stitch as a stitch, so because it's quite tricky to get into. So that's one. I'm going to go in there for the next one. I'm going to go in there for my next one. Like I said, whatever looks neat on yours is absolutely fine. So let me just count one, two, three, four so far. Five, six. Seven. So I'm just going to do that all the way around till I get back to that beginning um, slip stitch that I just made and then I'll show you what to do from there, okay? So I actually did 22 stitches all the way around there. Um, just tuck that tail in and just show you what that looks like. So it just neatened it up quite a lot, hasn't it? It's taken away that rough edge. Um, so what you do then is you just want to um, continue in the round really so um do another round on top of that so don't don't slip stitch into the next um the stitch that you started with just single crochet into it so that you're continuing in the round so that's your first one what you want to do is a single crochet in each single crochet you just made so for me that was 22 so i'm going to make 22 uh, single crochet all the way around but for you it'll be whatever your stitch count was just then okay Okay, so I've done 22, so I'm back to the beginning again. And this time I want to start decreasing the neck so it starts to go up as a neck would. Um, so I'm just going to do, um, I think around, so we've got 22, so I'm gonna do around five single crochet, then a decrease, five single crochet, then a decrease. Um, and we'll just end on whichever stitch we get to. So um, five single crochet as normal, one, two, three, four, five. And then I'm gonna do a decrease here. And then another five, one, two, three, some more yarn, four, five, and another decrease, so that's 12 isn't it, 15, 14, 15, 16, 17 and then I'm just going to do one more decrease and then another single crochet takes me up to where I finished and that's just decreased the neck a little bit so it's going to go up into an angle a bit more uh, not an angle but go into sort of funnel a bit more so actually I'm going to take this opportunity now just to um, put a little bit of stuffing in there just because that gap is going to get a little bit smaller just so I can push it right to the back so um, you don't have to do it now it's just I tend to um, like to stuff my toys quite firmly so I'm just going to push quite a lot into there and then all you're going to do now in terms of crocheting the body before we move on to the head is you're just going to do one more single crochet in each stitch around and that just covers up the um, decrease stitches because they can look a little bit um, not messy but just a bit unfinished sometimes so if we end with a single crochet round it's just a, looks a bit more finished so I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna stuff it even more like I said I like especially with um, with cotton it's really nice to have it really firm so I'm gonna do a single crochet uh, in every single stitch around so I think that's about a stitch count of 19 we're on now. Like I said, it doesn't matter at this stage, it's um, the stitch count entirely because you did. Uh, we will have done different amount of stitches around the neck. 
um, depending on, on where, how kind of yours looked best. Um, but if you are following along with me, then we're going to do 19 single crochet in the next round. Okay, so it's looking like that at the moment, and all I'm gonna do, I've just done my 19 single crochet, all I'm gonna do now is slip stitch into the next stitch, like so, and I'm gonna pull up quite a lot of yarn, because um, I hate running out for starters. But um, what we're gonna use this yarn for, I'm just gonna cut it there, it's better to have more than, than not enough. What we're gonna use this yarn tail for in just a second, or once we've done the head, is to actually sew the head to the body. So the more you leave, um, the better really, the more comfortable you'll feel. So I'm just gonna finish stuffing that body. Okay, so onto the head then. Um, put the body to one side. We are going to start again with our magic ring as we do with Amigurumi projects. And I have a video that goes into more detail or you can restart this video if you were comfortable with that. Otherwise, I'm gonna go a little bit quicker now. So what we're going to do is we're going to put six into the magic ring. Then we're going to increase, the next round we're going to increase into um, every stitch around until we have 12. And then we're going to increase single crochet, increase single crochet, increase single crochet, all the way around until we have 18. So if you need to watch the first part of this video again, just so you've got um, a magic ring with 18 stitches, um, a magic circle that'll be at that point with 18 stitches in it, then uh, come back, pause the video, if you don't need the videos to help you, um, and then come back and we will go from there, okay? So I will see you back here once you have increased up to 18 single crochet. Okay, so you should have 18 stitches in the round at this point. And what you're going to do next is we're gonna to start to curve up the head now, actually. Um, to create the kind of muzzle part of the unicorn. So actually what we're gonna do now is a single crochet in each stitch around for two rounds. So basically the easiest way to do this is just do 36, yes, that's right, isn't it? So two times 18, just count to 36 and you will have achieved the next part of the pattern. So one, two, 35 and 36. See, I just counted 36 stitches and in doing so I did two rounds um, on the uh, on 18, oh, sorry, on the 18 single crochet round. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is increase, increase again up to 24 stitches. So if you remember from when we were working on the body, you just do an increase in the first stitch and then one single crochet alone in the next stitch and one single crochet alone in the following stitch and then increase again so one two in the same stitch and then one single crochet on its own and the next single crochet on its own all the way around till you have 24. Okay, I've increased and now I have 24 stitches. So we're actually going to do the same again. We're gonna do two rounds now of one single crochet in each stitch around. So because we're at 24, we need to double that and count to 48 this time. So 48 single crochet, and then we'll come back and move on to the next part. So that's one, two, three, 47, 48. There we go, so it's really taking shape now. The next thing we want to do is increase again. So we're gonna get up to 30 single crochet this time. So all that is, is increase in the first stitch, which means two single crochet in one stitch together. Then a single crochet each in the next three stitches. Okay, so you're going to do increase, one, two, three, all the way around until you have 30 stitches. Okay, increase round done. The next thing we need to do is single crochet in every stitch around for the next nine rounds. So 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, for the next 10 rounds, yeah. So you could count 300 if you wanted to. Um, that's the stitch count that we'll, we'll need, but if you'd prefer, just chuck a stitch marker in there or do the method that we did before. So single crochet in the first two, 
and go back with your hook like that into the first stitch and just pull that tail through from the um, from the magic ring and just carry on and then you can count your rows up afterwards rather than having to count 300 stitches. If you, if you like the counting and it's therapeutic for you then by all means go ahead and do that. Otherwise, either way, I will see you back here once you have done 10 more rounds of a single crochet in every stitch around and then we begin our decreasing. Okay, so once that's done, this is actually a really good time to put your safety eyes on. Um, if your sewing eyes on, you can do them afterwards. You can just embroider them on with a little bit of black um, yarn. But if you are doing the safety eyes, then um, I've got here on my pattern that we're doing in between round seven and eight. So let's just have a look how they look on there. Um, I haven't decided on my size yet either, so I'm going to have a look how that goes. So count up the rounds, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So there, I'm going to actually go between eight and nine. And I think that size actually suits quite well. And we're going to do them, not the opposite side, but the There we go, so there are the safety eyes on there. Okay, so we need stuffing nearby. Um, ready to stuff it. Let's get those safety eyes secured on first with their backs. So the backs look a little something like this. If you haven't used safety eyes before, um, they actually give a really good finish. So you just go inside and put the backs on. They give a really good finish because they make it look more professional, I suppose. And if you're hoping to sell your crochet makes, um, then it's really good. People like that kind of more professional finish. Okay, happy with them. All right, so we're going to start doing the decrease now. We don't need to stuff it just yet. When the hole gets a bit smaller, we'll start stuffing. So um, the first thing we need to do is to do a decrease stitch and then followed by three single crochet. Okay, so decrease. three single crochet on their own decrease three single crochet on their own and you're just going to do that all the way around until you have a stitch count of 24 Okay, so we've got the stitch count down to 24. This time we're going to decrease again and we're going to get our stitch count down to 18. So that means um, decrease, sorry, decrease followed by two stitches. Decrease followed by two single crochet. So do that all the way around until you have 18. So 18 stitches done now. So um, the next thing we need to do is decrease down to 12. Um, I'm just thinking that opening is getting rather small so I'm going to stuff a little bit now um, because the aim of this round is to completely close off the head. So I'm gonna stuff that a little bit and then I can top it up a little bit as well. Um, just so it's not impossible to get in there because like, there's nothing worse when you're just struggling to get your stuffing in. So um, as I said, so this next round, once you've done a little bit of stuffing or you can save your stuffing to the next round, uh, this next round you're going to get down to 12 single crochet. So what you need to do is decrease in the first stitch again only this time we're just going to do one single crochet 
um, in the next stitch on its own. Decrease one, decrease one, decrease one until you have a stitch count of 12. So let me just show you the beginnings of that. So decrease, it's the only problem with putting the stuffing is it gets in the way, but we'll be okay. Okay, so decrease, then one on its own, and then decrease, and one all the way around until you have a stitch count of 12. Final round of the head now. Make sure it's stuffed really, really tightly, really firmly. You want it to feel like, like a toy, really. So you want it to feel nice and firm. Um, so we're going to do a, de a decrease stitch into every stitch around now um, until we only have six stitches. So it can get really fiddly, and for that reason, I'm probably not going to successfully be able to show you on the camera um, but the, the the trick is just keep your hands as firm as possible on it it does get a bit achy to be honest with you but um, that's the trick to it just keep firm um, okay so if you do six decreases all the way around I'll show you how to close that up and then the next stage is to actually sew that on to the head onto the body sorry and if you survived the fiddliness of that, you should have six stitches left. And all you're going to do is go back into that first one again and do a slip stitch. And pull up a length of yarn, snip it off. And then we're just gonna use the drawstring method to close that hole that we've got at the back there. So thread that onto your yarn needle. I'll do this other way around, it's gone a bit frayed. Um, yep, love it when that happens. <laughs> okay, so the yarn is slightly too thick for my yarn needle, but we should be okay. There we are, okay, so now I'm just gonna use the drawstring method and that just means I go into, oh, not on camera, I go into the next stitch, go under it in that way, go back through that way, and then continue going sort of back and forth into all the stitches that you've made, so it's only six. Um, I think that's four. Five, six, and then I'm just going to come out again just so that my tail ends on the outside and then I'm just going then I'm just going to pull that and the hole should disappear if it doesn't disappear um, you can just sort of sew it closed it's going to be very fiddly for me because this cotton is so um, um, tough it's much easier with a nice soft wool or acrylic, but I like using cotton because you get the, the kind of sturdy finish at the end. But honestly, however you do it, it should turn out. I've, I've made this pattern with acrylic before actually, and it was, it was squishier, and I didn't use the safety eyes, so it was more kind of suitable for a baby. Whereas when you use the safety eyes, um, you don't really want to be giving this to a baby because they're a choking hazard. So that is that. I'm just going to snip that off. And there we have the head. Um, once we've got the horn on and the mane and things like that, it'll look, look a, a lot more unicorny. So now we just bring the body back in and we're just going to sew the head onto the body around about that position there. Um, and the reason we're sewing it on now is because of the because I put the safety eyes on, I want to make sure that I sew it on and it's not wonky, so that when I come to put the horn on in a bit, in a second or in a while later, um, I know that's central as well. So um, you don't have to sew it on at this point. You could wait till the end and, and assemble it at that point. I just personally like to do it as I'm going, just so I can sort of see how things are looking as I'm going. So. I'm going to take the long tail that I left for the body and I'm going to thread that onto my 
yarn needle. Oh, it's happened again. This yarn does not like to be threaded because it's quite thick. Okay, hopefully that won't cause any problems. Um, make sure my body is as tight and as well stuffed as I want it. Put the head on in the position I want it. And then again, quite fiddly, as is kind of the the case, tends to be the case with most crochet, unfortunately. But it's always worth it in the end. You're just going to go... Sorry, I'm trying to do this on camera, but it's... There we go. You're just going to go into a stitch on the head, pull through, and then go back through a stitch on the neck. So really, just sew it on as you think, how you think it should be. But that's basically the gist. One stitch in the head and into a stitch on the neck. Okay, I'm going to do that off camera then. I'll come back and show you what it looks like once I've sewn the head on. And then we'll move on to the next stage. And that's what it should look like once the head's been sewn on. So we're going to move right on with the horn now. And I'm just going to show you um, what that should look like. I've done a, a kind of version before sort of to show you what it's going to look like. Because what we're doing is we're going to create this kind of ribbed effect. And the way that we do that is by crocheting into the back loop of the stitch only. So as you can see, a stitch is a kind of a V. And this one here furthest from you is the back loop. So we're going to crochet into those um, only to create that kind of horn look. So I'm using um, the pink yarn and this is the same colour that I'll be using for the, um, the hooves on the, on the feet. Um, and the reason I'm doing that is just to, just to tie it all in really. I've just got a knot in my yarn and so I'm just going to... Just to tie it all in, colour coordinate. So we're going to start with six single crochet in the magic ring, um, as per usual. Please feel free to pause the video at any point if anything is going too fast and you need to catch up. Three, four, five, and six. Pull the tail. And now this is going to be a particularly fiddly round and the, the whole horn is quite fiddly to be honest because we're going into the back loops. So you're going to do one single crochet in each stitch around, okay? So this will create the kind of pointy part of the horn. So I've gone into the back loop only which is why I've only got sort of one bit of a stitch there on my, on my hook. So yarn over and do a normal single crochet into the next one, into the back loop only, yarn over. Next one into the back loop only. And that's three, four, five, and six. Okie doke. The next round then is going to be an increase round. Um, and I'm going to do six up to nine. We're not going to go up to 12 as we have been doing, we're going to go up to nine. So I'm going to do two in the first stitch, one, two, one on its own in the next stitch, makes three, four and five in the next stitch together, six in the next back loop on its own, seven and eight in the next stitch and nine on its own in that stitch. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to do one single crochet in every single back loop around now. Um, we're going to do that three three rounds so just count to 27 basically so it's three times nine so count to 27 and do one single crochet in the back loops only okay and once we've done that we'll um we'll begin the next part of the project so that's what it should look like uh when you're done just take your hook out and snip leave a nice long tail so that you can 
sew it to the head when you're ready to do that. I'm just going to put it to one side for now. And the next stage we're going to do, we're just going to finish up everything that's needed for the head. So the next step is to make the little ears very cute little ears so what we're going to do is we're going to make a magic ring again in the back to the white yarn again because we're on the ears now we're going to make another magic ring and we're going to put six stitches into that magic ring one two three four five six this project really shows you how integral the magic ring is to, to Amigurumi, which is why it's so important that you nail it. So um, go back and check out my beginner videos if it's really been a struggle for you, because um, once you've nailed the magic ring, Amigurumi just comes really easily and you'll be making cute toys of, of all sorts. So obviously um, we need to make two of these and they are in theory very simple, but actually can be quite fiddly, because what we're gonna do now for the next, um, so it's going to be a total of five rounds, so two, three, four, five. For the next four rounds, we're going to single crochet into every stitch around, into every single crochet around, um, and then slip stitch to, and then fasten off and leave a set up tail for sewing. And then what you do when you sew them on is you kind of make them look more ear-like, but I'll show you what I mean by that. So you've got your six single crochet there. You're just going to go into the entire stitch this time. Don't go just into the back loop. Back, back to normal single crochets and you're just going to do four rounds so four times six um, is 24 so you're just going to count is that right yeah so you're just going to count um, to 24 and it's probably going to be quite slow going because it's very fiddly um, but it's worth it in the end okay so um, I'll leave you to do that do that twice and then slip snip them off and then we'll move on to um, to the feet, to the legs, and then we're nearly done. And so that's what the ears look like when they're done. And what we'll do when we sew them on is we'll kind of fold them in a little bit to create the, the inner ear. So we'll put them to one side with the horn for a second. What we're doing now is we're gonna create the, uh, the legs and the feet. So there's the three I've made already. Um, and then I'm going to show you how to make um, make one and then you can just watch this video four times if you need to or um, so that you can make sorry not this video but this section of the video you can watch um, as many times as you need to so that you can make your four legs so the pattern goes like this you take your color that you want for the um, for the for the hooves I suppose they are so the, the bottom of the leg there so I'm going to use the pink and you will do um, a magic ring and you will do six stitches into the magic ring one two three oh, three four five six and then you just pull that tight um, and then you're just going to increase that to twin, uh, sorry, 12 stitches. So if I can get my hook in, that is. So two single crochets into each stitch around. and 11 and 12 okay and then you're just going to do one single crochet um, sorry wobbly camera one single crochet into each stitch around okay so one two 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And don't finish the 12th, go into the stitch like that. Half, pull the, pull the, um, ugh, excuse me, pull this, the thread through, so pull the yarn through, so you've got the two loops in your hook. Then get your white yarn, or the yarn that you've been using for the, um, for the body, for the main part of the unicorn, or you can do any colour you like really, and hold the short tail at the back of your hand like that so along with the pink yarn okay so hold that tight like that and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna wrap the white yarn around your hook and pull it through as if you're just doing a normal single crochet so the key comes from you holding those threads of yarn tight in the back there um, so now you've got that on your hook you can go into the next stitch and do normal as if normal okay so one two so what we're going to do now is we're going to do one single crochet in each stitch around for um let me count this for six rounds so we're going to count to 72 okay um so you're going to do 72 single crochet and once you've done that you will end up with a foot that looks a little bit like that. Of course, I have stuffed this one as well in anticipation of sewing it. So when you stuff it, it goes a little bit rounder and a little bit flatter like that, which looks a bit cuter. So um, you're gonna do uh, one single crochet in each stitch around for six rounds, okay? So if you're counting, that's 72 stitches. So I'll, I'll come back once we've done that. So once you've done your five rounds, your six rounds, sorry, you will end up with this situation. So I'm just gonna cut off the pink first of all. And then I'm going to slip stitch into the next stitch, which I've already done, and then pull my yarn out, leave a nice long tail for sewing comfortably, and slip it off. And then I'm just gonna push all, sorry, I'm on camera, <laughs> push all my tails in, get a, t a small amount of stuffing, um, it's probably too much actually and just stuff that in I see like that okay and then as you as I said to you it goes a little bit fatter than when you stuff it which is quite cute okay so we now have most of our pieces ready to go um, what we need to do next is the mane um, and the tail and that's going to be made up of a mixture of colors so you need to make sure you've decided what kind of colour combination you want um, in your mane and your tail. Um, and, and the fringe as well, of course. And then uh, once you've got that sorted, you're just going to do um, a chain of certain lengths for each of the colours. So I'll show you what I mean. So let's start with... The, the main, so this will be the bit going down the back of the unicorn. So what we're going to do is just do a slip stitch this time. So we're not actually starting with the magic ring for the first time. So we're just doing a slip stitch. I have videos that go into detail on how to do chaining as well. Um, but I'll do it nice and slowly for you if you are a beginner. Otherwise, please do check out my videos because they'll be nice and slow for you. So what we're doing here is we're going to chain 16. So I've done three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Okay, let's get those out of the way. Then we're going to do one single crochet in each stitch and that's going to be 15 because as you see we can't go into the one directly there because it's pretty much physically impossible. Um, 
So we're going to end up with 15 single crochet. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, and 15 is just going to be a, a slip stitch instead of a single crochet. Okay, and then we're going to leave a nice long length of yarn and cut it off. So you're going to do that in the other two colours as well. So you want three colours in the main. Um, so that's, the, that's what you're going to do in all those different colours. So pause the video and do that. Then we're going to do the fringe, which is only going to be um, a chain of 10 this time. So I'll, I'll stick with my yellow, seeing as I've got it here. So we're just going to do a chain of 10 this time. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10. And then one single crochet in the, in the nine stitches on that chain. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And nine is going to be a slip stitch. Should cut that one off. That tail might have been too short, but we'll see how we go. Um, and then finally for the tail, is going to be the same length as the um, as the main, so you just make uh, double up on the on the main um, on the main sizes. So just a reminder of what that was then. So for the main and the tail, you want to chain sixteen, and then do fifteen single crochet, uh, sorry fourteen single crochet along the chain, and one slip stitch on the end, and then cut off. So you're going to do that a total of six times. You could do it more if you wanted to have a kind of thicker tail because at the end we're going to sew it onto the back here. So if you want it to be a thicker tail, you could actually double up the amount that you do um, for the tail and also for the mane which is going to kind of start behind the horn. Um, so it might actually look nicer to have more, the more chains you have. You could do more than that as well, couldn't you? And then um, for the fringe in front of the horn, uh, you're just going to have that size, okay? And that was ten, chain 10 and then nine, um, eight single crochet rather, and one slip stitch into, into the chain, okay? So I'm going to do all of those and then I'm going to come back and show you how to attach everything. So that's the really exciting part. Um, okay, so I'll see you in a second to do that. So what you should have now is as many strands as you want to do for the main, um, the tail, and the fringe so I went for two of each colour for the mane and the um, tail and then for the fringe I'm just going to go for one of each colour. So the next step is to sew all of our kind of um, loose bits that we've been uh, crocheting all this time onto the unicorn. Um, so you need your, your yarn needle um, front and centre for this. Bring your, um, your unicorn back into the picture so you can you can start with what you want to really. Um, I think I'm going to start with the with the horn, which I have stuffed very lightly. And the reason I'm going to do that is because um, I have a bit of a habit of putting things on a bit wonky. So I'm going to take extra care with the horn. And also, I think you can't really attach the mane or the fringe until you know where the horn placement is. So I'm going to do the horn um, in between the eyes, but just pushed back a little bit so that the fringe um, doesn't get in the way of the eyes and the mane can dangle down the back of the head there. So I think I'm going to do the horn around about there which looks quite cute from the front as well. Um, and all you do is you sew, it's a bit more straightforward than when we, we sewed the, um, the head onto the neck, you just take a stitch from the horn and a stitch from the head and just go through and pull it through like that. And you just want to go all the way around 
making sure it's really secure, especially if you are giving this to a child to play with, then um, you want to make it sure it's on there nice. You want to make sure it's on there nice and securely because um, you know what children are like. They like to uh, they like to test things. So I'm going to do that all the way around off camera and then I'm going to show you what it looks like. And then I think from there, we're going to sew on the, the legs and the feet. So that's the horn all sewn in and uh, nice. I'm just going to pull that tight and snip the loose tail off. Um, the next thing, as I said, is going to be the feet. I'm not doing it in any particular order. I mean, I'm, I wanted to do the horn before the fringe, but other than that, it's just kind of up to you. So I know that these are going to be the bits that I need to make sure I get right and get them straight. So the feet, I'm just going to put um, just before the kind of slopey bit here at the front. And I think I'm going to put them a slight, a slight gap in the middle like that. Um, you can actually pin them down if you want to and then sew around the pins to make sure they are where you want them to be. Um, there's, I mean, I could, I could show you um, on camera, but really it's just something you just do. I'll, I'll begin the first one and show you how to start it. Um, but it's just as we have been doing really with the, uh, with the other parts, so like sewing the horn, sewing the head on, it's just a case of getting it where you want it. So it's about there. And then just go, making sure you go through the loops on the leg and on the body as close to where you positioned it as possible. Um, and and that's really all there is to it. It's it can be fiddly, um, but it's always always worth it at the end. And it's worth taking your time with it as well. Uh, take it from from me. I'm quite an impatient person. Um, I know from many times of having to undo things because I haven't quite got it right, it's better to do it slow and get it right the first time. So anyway, um, I'm gonna go ahead and sew on the this leg and the other three as well, and then I'll show you what that looks like when I'm done. Okay, so the little feet, the little legs have been sewn on and they're looking very cute. And the best part is he stands up probably can't tell from this image but yes very happy with that so um, next step is going to be the ears on to sew the ears onto the head so here they are and as I was saying to you when we made them we want to kind of try and fold them a little bit I'll show you what I mean so just thread them onto your yarn needle one at a time obviously um, and to create a kind of fold, it's hard with, with cotton because it's so solid, so stiff, but you want to kind of try and get a little bit of a fold. It might be easier if you're using acrylic, it might um, actually prove to be impossible with this yarn. And I'm just going to position them around there, um, almost next to the horn, either side, it's going to look really cute. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that just as we have been sewing on everything else and then I'll show you what they look like. And then finally we've got all the kind of tassely bits to sew on, the mane and the fringe and the and the tail and then we're going to get to see what this guy looks like in all his glory. Okay so go away, go away and sew those ears on and then we'll see where we are. And my ears are on. It's looking so cute, it's really coming together. Um, okay, so there's nothing um, standing between us and the colourful fringe. So, the way to do this is going to take some time, but the way to do this is obviously each, let's move the unicorn out by a second, 
each um, strand has got two kind of um, tails on it from where you started and where you ended so you kind of want to sew them both in just so that's extra secure and then the way you do that is really up to you so um, if we start with the tail you could do right side up you could do wrong side up it depends on the effect you want and I'm probably just going to choose an area so a kind of that that kind of a size and I'm just going to sew the tails um, try and mix the colours as much as possible just kind of like that and then I might do some underneath as well just for a really full layered layered look so hopefully it will look really good so we'll, we'll check it out we'll um, we'll do the tail first and then I'll come back and show you what I've got and talk you through it and then we'll move on to do the same for the main and end with the with the little fringe ta-da the main is now done as well and I think it turned out really cool so I just did it in exactly the same way I just sewed um, the first layer on then sewed kind of around and then so kind of around the horn the um, the next layer so that's looking really really cool right now so all that we have left to do is the fringe and I am just simply going to sew them on just onto the nose like that so I will do that around the kind of the horn there I'll just sew them in front of the horn and then once it's done, I will show you the finished product. And hopefully you have one that looks very similar or one that you're very happy with as well. I'll see you in just a few moments. So he's actually too big to fit in the camera properly now, but um, you can see the fringe. I've kind of quiffed it up there, but you can have it flat if, if you want to. Um, it's just, I think the thing that I like about this pattern so much is, especially for a child, um it's just really fun to play with like the hairs really fun you could plait it um i just think yeah it's it's um an exciting pattern um just as a final touch we're going to embroider a little smile onto the unicorn and i'm going to use the same pink from the horn but you could use black if you wanted to or red or any color you wanted to i'm just gonna try and coordinate a little bit and also a little pink smile is quite cute so I'm just going to go in down the bottom here with my yarn and come out in the middle there of that original magic circle that we made and then I'm going to follow the line of the magic circle follow the curve I should say and not going in there very easily and then come out the opposite side and just join it down there and come out somewhere random so I can snip it off in a second it's just gone a bit tight so I'm gonna pull it out a little bit And there's a cute little little smile on there. Um, so the final thing then, let's put a centre stage, just snip these ends off. And that is a lot of ends I've got snipped off now. But the, the good thing about these, so I'll just show you because actually it's a lot. So these are all my ends from this project. Um, so the good thing about that now is you can use it as toy stuffing for your next project. So, yeah, no waste here. Um, so here we are. Is she, he, I don't know, um, is in, in all her glory. Um, it's been a really, really fun project. I hope you have enjoyed it as much as I have. And I hope I get to see you again soon around my channel. Um... This is, uh, you can find me on Instagram as well, the same name, so at LMLM Crochet. 
And if you do make a unicorn, I would love it if you use the hashtag LMLM crochet as well, so I could have a look at your makes. Um, this was one of my first original patterns, so it's really exciting to be able to share it with you on here. Um, and I hope you love her as much as I do. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you again soon. Bye. Welcome to LM LM Crochet. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this adorable little unicorn with his little floppy um, hair, little mane and tail. I hope you enjoy the tutorial. And if you have any questions at all, please leave them below and I will get back to you. Thank you.